Here we'll take a quick look at uh, why the pastoral epistles were written. So uh, we'll begin with Titus. The purpose for Titus seems to be that it was written to instruct Titus to uh, to both choose um, and to install elders on the island of Crete. So the situation it imagines is that Paul had been on the island of Crete, had evangelized, left it, uh, needed to leave it, and left Titus there and to finish up kind of the uh, the establishment of these churches uh, by installing elders. Uh, it does then assume an evangelistic effort with Paul and Titus on the island, um, and this is an effort that we do not see indicated in the book of Acts, but if the theory is that Paul had been released from his imprisonment as recorded by Acts, um, and then went on to Spain, and then went on to some other travels, then that's how uh, this situation would have occurred. First Timothy was written to motivate Timothy to withstand and combat false teachings. Um, this assumes a situation when Paul traveled to Macedonia, we think. Uh, he instructed Timothy to stay in Ephesus. And so again, it's a scenario that is not described in the book of Acts, but is dependent upon a theory that uh, Paul has uh, was released from his first imprisonment. Uh, 2 Timothy was written uh, to encourage Timothy's courage and to ask him to come to Paul, who was now arrested uh, another time. And um, he does not think that he is going to be released, but is kind of expecting his death. And so 2 Timothy is acting kind of like a, a farewell address uh, to, to those like Timothy who must continue on in preaching the gospel and um, establishing churches and fighting against heresies. Paul is, is in close confinement then, and we think most likely in Rome. Paul doesn't expect to be released, uh, and he wants to see Timothy, and also he mentions John Mark uh, before he is executed. The false teachers are a big component of the pastoral epistles. Um, what we can tell about these false teachers is are, they are Jewish, uh, because they seem to have their teaching that's centered on the law, and particularly he means the law of Moses in some way. But they're also fascinated with myths and genealogies. These are terms that are oftentimes used to uh, to speak disparagingly of one's opponent and what one's opponents believe in. And so myths are, you know, things that are fabricated, things that are untrue. Now by genealogies, he doesn't, Paul does not mean a kind of a, a descendants, but the word genealogy kind of refers to beginnings, and so this may be a group of people who are focused on stories or narratives about the beginnings of creation and use those stories in order to perpetuate their own false teachings about the state of the world, the state of the cosmos, and God's relationship with it, and Christians' relationship with God um, uh, because, of, because of the state of the, the world. There does seem to be some teaching elements of asceticism, uh, some instructions about giving up certain things, uh, maybe certain meats, uh, forbidding uh, marriage. So that asceticism is a big deal in the Greco-Roman world. And lots of different groups uh, practice asceticism. Of course, asceticism also helps to contribute to the idea of control of passions and desires, uh, which is a virtue uh, amongst several philosophies. And so... Um, what Paul says the false teachers are saying is that this asceticism gives this kind of appearance of uh, kind of an appearance of godliness, but like he says in Colossians, um, you know, it's not really godliness; it just appears to be so. So Paul is concerned about the effect of of this teaching upon uh, believers. And there also seems to be some kind of erroneous view about the bottle, uh, about the resurrection. Uh, as if the only resurrection that is going to occur is the kind of spiritual resurrection, the new life that one has uh, when they become a Christian. And uh, it may be that they are denying the idea of a, a bodily resurrection. Paul does not go in, into the details about what this view are, but trying to uh, see how this view is, might be similar in some of uh, Paul's other writings. And finally, one other thing we can probably say about the false teachers is that they're possibly elders. Uh, in Acts 20, 
Paul does warn uh, the elders from Ephesus who's come down to him to Miletus, and he warns them that there will arise from among you, meaning uh, could possibly meaning from among the elders themselves, wolves in sheep's clothing. Uh, the among you may be among the congregation, but um, it could be as well that it's a reference to elders. And so uh, if there are people who are teaching things, since that's the role of, te the, role of the elders, are to be the authoritative teachers, uh, it's likely that uh, these false teachers are also acting in the roles of, of an elder, of a local, a local group, of a local congregation. And that's the false teachers and one of the main reasons why these letters were written.